So today's the 1st of April and traditionally in the UK uh, the weather's always nice and shiny but uh, we get lots and lots of rain in April so today is very traditional we've got rain and sun at the same time so welcome to another shiny but very wet Jim's Lemon Garden. <laughs> Okay, so one of the jobs that we're going to do today is put in some um, some more Petrage kale and some Scottish kale. Now these seeds were sent to me very kindly from Richard Sydenham last year and um, you saw the plants um, in the tour last week. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is putting effectively the remainder or most of the remainder of the seeds. Now the thing is with brassicas, they are always the best the first year round, but you can store um, brassica seeds for a number of years, but obviously you know the germination rate will, will will most certainly decrease. So in exactly the same way as we did the kale the other week, uh, all we need to do is put some some damp compost in a in a um, seed tray, and you need to you need to put it reasonably deep because what you want to do is you want the plenty of room for the uh, the roots to to get in there, basically. So you want to fill it almost to the top of the the seed tray. Not, not completely to the top, but almost to the top like that. And then level it off as best you can with a piece of wood um, or the bottom of a pot or something like that, anything you've got to hand really. Uh, but don't do it with your hands, do it with a piece of wood because what you want is, this, is the ground to be as level as you can possibly get it. Uh, now this compost is, is already moist and that's deliberate. Um, so I can, uh, so it'll, you know, you want a bit of moisture underneath the seeds to start them off. So we'll start off with the Petrage kale. The two seeds are almost identical, um, they're like small dark brown black balls and uh, what I'm going to do is put one, um, what I'm do is put one about every um, every inch or so and you can, you can be as fussy as you like really but um, what I typically do is put one um, sort of along like that, so five in a row if you like in a full size tray like this and then move an inch along and then put another five in. Because what you want to do is when you, because what you're going to do is pull these out as soon as they've grown um, to about two inches high. What you're going to do is pull these out and pot them up into bigger pots until you put them into the ground. And then um, what you'll be able to do then is is um, sort of grow them on inside the greenhouse. Now all brassicas are reasonably hardy, you know. So as soon as they've germinated, um, I'm dropping two or three seeds at a time here. Um, as soon as you've, um, sorry, they are quite hardy. That's what, that's what I was saying. And um, so, as soon as you've got them germinated, they will grow one in quite cold conditions. But in the UK at the moment, it's pretty warm. Um, in the in the um, actually in the greenhouse at the moment, it's 40, 43 degrees Fahrenheit. Believe it or not, um, I've only just come up, so I've just opened the door, and it's already got to forty. So that'll more that's more than warm enough to germinate seed. So. That's the that's the um, seeds in there. So I have still got some more. That's the petrage kale. Now the petrage kale should grow to about five foot high, and this is the kale that I've been growing um, last year, and it has been absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much to Richard again. Um, I am going to um, save some of my own seeds, so I have got some plants running to seed at the moment, which I'm going to leave in as long as I can, and then hopefully harvest the seeds from them for, um, for next year. So what I'm going to do now is um, I've got another bag of compost just off camera here um, which is um, um, dry so you can see the difference in the colour so that's the that's the wet compost and obviously I've got a handful of dry compost here and all I'm going to do is sprinkle that um, over you only need a slight covering uh, you know you only want a sort of quarter of an inch or so you can go slightly deeper um, no, I just want a little bit more. So I've got, as I said the other day, I've got two bags of compost, one that's dry, that's been in the greenhouse all winter, 
and uh, I've got another one that's um, that's been out in the in the element, so it's still wet. Right. So as soon as you've got um, about quarter of an inch, sort of five millimeters of um, six millimeters of compost on there. Now what you want to do is make sure um, it's it's nice and compressed. Now all brassicas like hard ground. They don't like it to be too loose. Uh, but obviously as the seedlings you know you do want to get the you know the roots off so you want it reasonably firm now what I'll do now is just give that a little bit of water obviously the compost at the bottom is quite wet anyway so all I need to do really is wet the top and then they'll be off now if I leave them in there now for um, a couple of weeks what I'll end up with are seedlings exactly like exactly like that now these are the um, these are the calabrese or the, or the green broccoli that I planted um, about two weeks ago now. I have got some slug pallets in there because I've noticed a couple of them down here um, have been nobbled off. I don't know if you can see that. Um, now I, I suspect it's a mouse, but um, I've put some um, I've put some slug pallets in there just in case it is slugs. But um, I've got more than enough there for me. So uh, that's the uh, the calibers which I'll be potting it up shortly. So I'll I'll share to do that in another clip. But um, so that's what this exactly what this will look like um, in a couple of weeks' time. As always. All brassicas look the same when they're young, so uh, do put a, um, a label in to make sure you know that this is the um, the petrage kale, and then uh, you know you won't get them mixed up when um, you, you know as soon as they come through, you won't get them mixed up with the other brassicas that you've got. Okay, one other seed that also keeps really well um, are tomatoes. Now, um, tomato seeds, as long as you keep them. Uh, what I always do with my tomato seeds is um, any that I'm going to keep for the following year what I'll do is I'll use what I need this year and then I'll put it in a plastic bag like that which is sealable and that'll keep them um, you know from you know from sort of any bugs or making them go bad but tomato seeds are good for four or five years so if like me um, you only grow a few tomatoes of a certain variety um, you know things like um, gardeners delight now I'll only grow two or three plants every year because these these are the little cherry tomatoes and you get absolutely loads on a couple of plants so for my needs really I don't need any more than sort of two or three plants of these so what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll buy a packet of seeds now these are good you can see there I bought them last year 2016 and they're good right up until 2019 so there's three years and they'll probably germinate after 2019 to be honest so as I'm, as I'm only going to grow um, a few of these what I'm going to do is just put five or so seeds um, in a pot here because I don't need too many of these. Um, obviously the um, the money maker and the alicante um, tomatoes that I grow, you know, I grow loads of them. So I'll typically put a whole packet of them in. Um, so I've got I've got quite a few seeds here. So what I'll do is I'll just bob them in. You haven't got to be too particular about it. Try and get them as separated as you possibly can because what you want to do is when you pot these up into a larger pot. What you want to do is, um, um, you know, take as much root with each one as you can. So that's that's the seeds in the top of the pot there. I don't know if you can see. And then all I'm going to do again is just put a little handful of um, dry compost on top of there. Um, obviously, label them up because they'll look just like other tomatoes when they first come up. So all I've done there is I've 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 literally put about a quarter of an inch of. Um, compost on top. I've just noticed the pot's split actually. So what I'll do, just drop that into another pot as well. And then I'll, I'll label that up, give it a bit of water, and then they'll be growing on, um, and they'll be up in the next couple of weeks. Now, I've got some um, alicante that I planted um, two weeks ago. As you can see, they're already up. Um, so they're not quite ready to be pricked out yet, but as you can see, the germination rate is absolutely fantastic. I think every seed I put in there has germinated. So what I'll be doing is I'll be pricking these out in the next couple of weeks um, into square pots like that to grow on, ready to put in the greenhouse in a month or so's time. But that's the other county, that's exactly what they'll look like in about two weeks time. Okay, so I thought I'd go through some of the comments and questions that I've had over the past um, sort of four weeks now. It's been a while since I've done a uh, comment um, section. First one comes from Sandy Moth, and she was asking about old rosemary, and she was saying that her rosemary bushes got quite large and woody and stuff. Now, rosemary such isn't a um, you know it's not a herbaceous plant. It's you know it's evergreen, so it is more of a shrub than anything. So um, there's no real dormant um, period in a rosemary 
you know, during the year. So I would suggest at the end of the year, um, if you are going to cut it down, um, I would I would I would cut it down at the end of the year when the plants sort of the least do uh, you know the most dormant. Um, but but what I would suggest you do is take some cuttings before you do that because I'm I'm not quite sure how old your plant is and it may well. Um, you know die if you cut it back so what I suggest you do is take some cuttings now I took one last year and I this is this is basically the cutting that I took and all you need to do is take a sprig about uh, you know one of the fresh um, you know the new growth branches um, obviously this this time of year if it's flowering it's no good what you need to do is wait for the flowers to stop um, and then take um, something about six inches long take off the majority of the uh, the leaves and um, all the little spines on it um, Take those off so you've just got, I don't know, about half a dozen or so at the top. And then stick that down the side of the pot, which is exactly what I've done with this one. And then that's that's sort of a year on. They are quite slow growing. But obviously if you do that, if you do three or four of them, stick them down the side of a pot um, in some well-drained compost. And then they'll 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 root quite easily. Um, and then and then cut your plant down. What I would suggest is don't go too brutal, don't don't sort of cut it down too much. Um, I wouldn't. I'd suggest you take no more than a half of what is there down, and then um, you know you should, um, you know the plant should survive. Try and leave some green on the plant. Don't cut it down so there's no green on it at all. Always leave some branches. What you can do is do it in stages. So, take out some of the big sort of branches and then leave the bottom ones, and then leave it like that for um, six months or so till you see some new shoots growing on the. On, on, on the bits that you've cut back and then cut the other bits back so you might need to do it in stages if it's a really old plant you need to you know sort of take it steady and then you should um, it, it should survive the uh, the cut back but because it's a because it's a shrub it should react reasonably well to being cut back but I wouldn't be too severe if you cut stuff at the ground it's unlikely to come back I'd say um, the second question Sandy Moth had got was um, dried versus fresh herbs. Obviously fresh is always best, you know, you're going to have the most amount of vitamins and, and goodness in there. However, dried herbs do still have, um, you know, all of the goodness in there. The, with, with herbs, the majority of the, the goodness are in the oils that are in there and a lot of those will evaporate as they dry. So, um, you know, obviously the, the largest content to evaporate will obviously be water or whatever, but the, you know, you will lose some of the oils and that that are in there. So, um, you know, they are better fresh basically, but th there are still goodness in, 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 in um, dried herbs. Um, Arthur Cook put a um, comment down about the um, asparagus um, episode that I put out. Um, the first question he got was on the asparagus bed, I've got some tiles at the side, and the, the ridge tiles, the ones that are kind of triangular shaped. Uh, which go on the top of a um, roof. The reason I've got those there is um, threefold. The main reason is so I've got something hard to step onto as I step over to get the, the asparagus shoots from the far side of the bed. That's the main reason. Second reason is um, um, it, it creates like a little tunnel underneath and um, I've found that frogs like to go under there because it's nice and moist and cool and so they typically go under there. So it, um, because it's next to the strawberries, it encourages frogs to go near the strawberries as well, to, you know, to bring down the, the, the slugs, basically. And um, the third um, reason is, I've got nowhere else to put the tiles. <laughs> so, uh, but, but no, that's, that, that's, that, that's, that's um, kind of why the tiles there. It basically gives me some, something to step onto whilst I'm, whilst I'm picking the, uh, um, the asparagus mainly, and it's a little um, sort of hard away for frogs. Um, uh, the next question you got was about salt, and you said you put salt on yours. Uh, the things you need to, uh, the point I was trying to make with salt is, its concentration will build up in the um, the ground. Asparagus is quite um, resilient to salt, however, it's not immune to it. So what will happen is the salt levels in your soil will increase and increase and increase year by year, to the point where it, it kind of saturates the soil, or it gets to a point where the asparagus can no longer thrive in it and you will see that the asparagus will start to um, suffer a little bit and potentially you could kill it as well so um, you know there's there's not a problem putting salt on the ground but just don't do it every year uh, because the salt will stay in the ground and you know the concentration will build up uh, next comment comes from Brian Hubbery at over at Allotment Life and he was talking about um, asparagus propagation and he was saying do the do the roots shoot off now the the Basically, you've got an asparagus crown, which is basically the plants. They they don't um, multiply under the ground with the roots. Basically, the only way to grow asparagus is from seed. Um, so what you need to do is get the um, get the the seed from the plant, like I you know like I was explaining before, 
plant the seed and then grow the plants and then sort of grow them on over a couple of years and then you form the root and then obviously that's the that's the, the herbaceous part which will which will be in the ground all the while and that's where the shoots come from so if you want more asparagus plants the only way to do it really is from seed um, he also said that um, Morrisons are selling um, six six roots for five pound which is which is not a bad price really so um, he, that was the uh, one comment he put on there next one he was saying about carrot root fly um, and he said that he, he even before he dug his carrots up um, he was getting um, attacked by a carrot root fly. There must be quite a few carrot root fly by you. Um, as I say, the point I was making um, with the carrot root fly is they can only fly about 18 inches or 45 centimetres off the ground. So if you put a, a fence or a, a wooden um, board around your um, carrot beds, they can't get over that, you know, you know to get up the carrots. Um, obviously, carrot root fly can also attack parsnips as well. Um, it, it, the parsnips are less prone to it but they can um, attack parsnips as well, but really the only two ways of stopping carrot root flies are to put a net over them, which isn't ideal, it's a bit of a, um, bit, bit of a faff, or put a um, fence all the way around, and you can make the fence out of anything, as long as you can't get through it, so you can make that out of net or glass or wood or whatever, as long as there's no holes that they can get through um, you know, to the carrots, then uh, you know, that will protect your carrots and your parsnips. Um, the next one was he was saying about, um, Brian was saying about planting parsnips and he was saying he uses the broom technique to stick a broom in the ground and then sort of waggle it around so you end up with a conical shaped hole, fill that with compost or something that's at least stone free, you know, you could use riddled soil or whatever, um, and then plant the parsnip on the top. Um, and I think quite a few people use that technique. The one thing that I would say is if you're using a broom handle, when you push the broom handle in, if the broom handle's blunt, what it'll do is it'll form a um, like a solid piece of soil at the bottom. Um, so what I suggest you do is um, use something with a, with literally a point on the end of it. So as it goes in, it won't compress the soil too much, and then you'll you, you know then you'll get ideally longer um, parsnips from that. Uh, next one comes from uh, Brock One excavating the allotment. Um, and uh, they were talking about asparagus peas, and they've they've grown asparagus peas last year, um, and uh, they said they grew quite a few plants, and they had loads and loads of them. Um, I I have put quite a few in, um, but I am going to I'm I'm only going to grow probably about half a dozen of those, or possibly nine on, um, to you know to eat. I'm going to be giving some of those away to some of my neighbouring um, allotments here, so I'm not um, I'm not in, intending to grow all of those in the allotment because I. I've, I've had a few comments from people saying that the you know there's loads and loads of um, asparagus peas on there, so uh, I'll be giving some of them away from my neighbours. So I'll grow probably about six or nine something like that. Okay, the next comment comes from Brian Hubbard, and he was saying that he never saves his own sweet pea seeds because they're so cheap to buy in the shop. And I must admit, um, from a germination point of view, I've I've always found that if you save sweet pea seeds, you're going to get around a 50% success rate. If you buy them from a shop, it's almost 100%. Um, if you look at these, these are um, these are the sweet peas that I put in a couple of weeks ago. And I don't know if you can see that, but there's I put five seeds in each of those cells, and I've pretty much got five plants coming out of each of the cells. There's some of them that are just starting to pop through now, um, but I'm, I'm I'm pretty sure out of all of those, I'm, I'm going to have pretty much five plants in each one. So it's it's pretty much 100% um, success rate of sweet peas. So I'm sure if I'd have put um, my own seed in there, I'd have probably got about 50%, possibly less success rate. Um, and I've found that year on year, uh, you know, it, it, even if you plant them at the same time as the ones that you buy in the shop, in the same soil, in the same conditions, you, you know, you get about half the success rate uh, with your own seed. Uh, or at least that's what I've found. Um, and, um, but, you know, if you do want to save yourself a bit of money and you save hundreds of sweet pea seeds which is really easy because in each pod there's about five or six you know you just put loads more seed in and you will get your plants anyway but um, you know if you you know if you if you're short on room um, in your greenhouse then you know for you know for the price of um, sweet peas if you go to Wilco there's only about 25p or 50p for a packet of um, sweet pea seeds so it, it's it's not really worth bothering with to be honest with you um, and the last comment comes from um, Richard Sydenham and this was the comment about me talking about um, either using tap water or um, um, rain water to water your um, seedlings you, you know, when you first start. Um, 
I'm going to suggest that you use tap water when you first start them off. Um, I just wanted to make that point clear. Um, with my, you know, with all of the plants, as soon as they've germinated, I always use um, rainwater because in, in rainwater you've got no chemicals, you've got no chlorine, all the rest of it. If you use tap water to water your plants all the time, you know, the chlorine levels and that, or the fluorine levels in the soil will increase, and that's not particularly good for your plants. So, um, the reason for using tap water for germinating seeds. Um, basically is because you've got no um, algae or, or fungus or bacteria or anything in the tap water so you, you know your germination rate should be better uh, but as soon as your plants are germinated as soon as they get to kind of that big so they have definitely germinated um, just just switch over to your you know your water book water which is just rain water and um, away you go so I've been watering these now with rain water I only water them two or three times until they start to come out the top of the the soil then I switch over to normal water. So there's, there's, there's pros and cons both ways. Um, I was water with tap water to start with so there's no bacteria in the compost uh, or in, you know near the seed so I get the best germination rate. Um, I have done experiments in the past where I've used um, rain water and tap water and I have found there's not a lot of difference but I have found with tap water you get more success rate. Um, the only problem with using uh, rainwater is what you can find is you get like this green sort of algae forming on top of the the, the compost if you use um, rainwater because there's you know there's you know there's algae in the water um, so that's the only problem really but if you use tap water continually um, you know the, the the chlorine levels in the um, in the soil will increase which isn't brilliant for your plants so that was just the comment that I was making so those are the comments that I've had in the past few weeks. Okay, so uh, the next job to do is pricking out the, um, this is the um, calabrese or the broccoli. Um, and now this is the first harvest, so obviously this is, this is quite early. I'll be putting in some more in about probably um, four or five weeks time, because what I want to try and do is get a succession of crops. So these are now, if you can see, they're, they're about kind of two inches high. So they're ready to pot out. Now I buy these pots from uh, Wilco's. Um, and they're a pound for I think six or no sorry a dozen um, or you know they are really cheap and they'll last you three or four years and the nice thing about these I like the fact that they're square because they'll stack together so you can put them in you know you can sort of put them like that on your you know in your greenhouse and you get a lot more in um, pots in obviously if they're round you've got all that space wasted between them but also the one thing with brassicas is the roots get quite established quickly and uh, what they can get is a little bit pot bound. So I've found if you've got a square pot, if, if it's a round pot, the roots will go round and round and round and round inside and get um, basically pot bound. If it's square, they'll typically go down rather than round. So uh, these are typically better for plants anyway. So all I'm gonna do is, I've just got some compost here, um, and all I do is loosely fill the, loosely fill the pots to the top. Um, I find this very therapeutic doing this, you know, but um, all you need to do on split, is get yourself some pots and then put in the compost like that. Again, this is wet compost, and just fill it loosely to the top like that. Now, the next trick is I've got a I've got a bit here where the um, where there aren't any plants, so I can do this. But if you've got plants all the way up to the side, what you might want to do is get the first one out with a with a pencil or a um, or an old um, label or something like that. Uh, but what, what you need to do is damage the roots the least amount possible. So what I'm going to do is, just with one finger, I'm going to stick that underneath like that, and then just lift it up, not touching the actual plant itself. So I don't know if you saw that, but I've basically pulled out the plant without actually touching it. I'm not touching it now. Um, and then all you do is get your pot with your, with your finger, make a hole about the same size, and just drop that in like that. So I've not really touched the plant at all. If you do need to touch the plant, um, obviously touch the leaves, don't touch the stalk. If you damage the leaves, the leaves will regrow. If you damage the stalk, the plant's done. It's, uh, it's no good for anybody. So I'll just show you that again. All you need to do is don't touch the plant, put your finger underneath like that. I'm gonna get two out here at the same time, I think. And then what you'll end up with is you can grab the compost like that. And now I've got a plant there with, with the roots. You can just see the roots there. Um, and then all I need to do, is make a hole about the same size as the compost that I've got, drop that in like that, keeping this upright, 
and then push that down. Now I know I've, I've effectively made the least amount of disruption to the roots that way and the plant's going to grow on nice and strong. Right, with with um, with all all brassicas really, um, there's there's no reason why you can't plant them a little bit deeper uh, than they were first in the uh, the seed tray. You know, you can plant them slightly slightly deeper. The find the thing that you find with all brassicas really is the roots aren't particularly big compared to the size of the plant. I mean, if you think of um, um, the the petrage kale or the um, or the uh, um, Brussels sprouts and things like that, you know, you get a massive stalk which is possibly this big, you know, two or three inches across and the plant's probably three or four, three or four foot high and the roots are probably about that big and for a plant that's that size, you know, the roots are really small so if you can plant the, if you can plant it slightly deeper uh, when, you, when you plot it on like this, what it will do is it'll give the plant a little bit more stability and obviously the, the roots will be a little bit further down so they're more likely to get to the water that's in the ground as well. So always try to plant them slightly deep. When you, you know, you don't want to put them in too deep, but um, you know, because what I'll do is I'll 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 plant them slightly deeper here. So that's that's the original level of the ground there. And all I'm doing is pushing that in, and then so it's it's gone in probably about a quarter of an inch deeper, so half an inch deeper than it was in the um, in the original tray, and then. Uh, when I actually plant it out, I'll probably plant it at an inch or so deeper, um, and then that will just help the plant um, just to keep its stability. Obviously, with um, with the larger um, brassicas, I, you know, as I say, like petrage kale or um, Scottish kale or Brussels sprouts and things like that, what you might need to do is cane, um, you know, put a cane up the side of the plant just to support it, because they can kind of fall over. Most of my petrage kales have fallen over, to be honest with you. But uh, you know, I mean, they'll still grow. But uh, you know, if you're doing things like um, sprouts and that, you know, you don't want them plants to fall over. Um, so, it, as long as you, as long as you um, support the plants, because obviously they do get, as they get older as well, they get a little bit top heavy, I think, as well. So if you can get some stakes or some steel poles like I've got, then that'll most certainly help your plant to support itself. So I'm just going to pop the rest of these off. Um, the other comment that I was going to say is these are going to go into a metal metal tray um, behind me here um, and uh, what I'm going to do underneath uh, underneath these because brassicas do grow quite quickly and they're quite um, you know they can be a little bit prone to drying out so just to help them along just a bit of a tip um, what I'm going to put underneath them in the, in the metal tray is some of this which is um, which is like a material which soaks up um, um, spillages and gouges and stuff like that. That's that's basically where it's come from. But uh, if you don't have any of that, just an old an old sheet or an old blanket or even newspaper or anything that will hold water. Um, you know, even if you put a bit of compost in the bottom of your tray, um, you know, that'll 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 hold the water and that'll make sure that they don't dry out. Um, and then. You know the plants will, will always have a bit of water to get to. Um, that'll help them along no end. But uh, I always I always do that with the brassicas. Then I find that um, they don't dry out. Because um, the one thing you need to be careful of with brassicas, most certainly cauliflowers, is you can never let them dry out. As soon as they've dry, dried out, they never really recover. Um, and to get really nice, healthy plants, most certainly when they're young, um, you always strive to make sure that they've always got water. Um, so if you put um, anything underneath the pot, you know, sit the, sit the pot directly on um, either some old carpet or an old blanket or a sheet or, or newspaper if you've got nothing else, or if you can get some of that, um, that material that I've got. Um, what that'll do is as you water them normally, it'll soak up the water, any excess water that comes out of the bottom of the pot, and then it'll stay in that material um, and it'll keep the atmosphere around the plant humid as well, which will also help it. Um, and it'll um, you know make sure that it's got plenty of water. So I'm just going to carry on potting the rest of these up, uh, but you should end up with you know something that's kind of like that. Now these will these will grow on in these pots now for probably about another three to four weeks. Um, at which point um, these are the seed leaves. These two little round leaves. Obviously that's the first. I don't know if you can see, but that's the first true leaf in the middle there, which is obviously pointed. The seed leaves are kind of round, and all brassicas look exactly the same. 
Um, so the, the the true leaves will grow, and as soon as this gets to, I don't know, about nine, six to nine inches high, it'll then be ready to go out. You don't want to leave it much longer than that because they will get pot bound, um, and, you know, and you want to help with the roots as much as you can. So um, I uh, I always tr endeavour to get them out um, before they get too big. Otherwise, you know, you, you really don't want them to get pot bound in the pot because that will that will most certainly um, hinder their growth after that point because the what you do find is the the roots kind of create a ball in in the pot and then when you plant them out in the ground you don't get so many roots coming out so they're even less stable than they are normally so really as soon as they get to kind of six inches or nine inches high you most certainly want to get them out don't let them get to a foot high because it's it's too late then and the, and the roots are already pot bound so that's the um, that's what to do with your your broccoli right now Okay, so just a quick update in the greenhouse. That's the um, black material I was talking to you about. Um, so I've put that underneath all of the um, calibres, as you can see. They're all nicely potted up now. So they'll be actually sitting in or onto damp um, cloth, and that'll just, just um, keep them nice and moist. Um, so we've got the, um, the Scottish kale and the Petrage kale potted up, um, sorry, um, planted, and we've also got the um, Garner's Delight. Um, in this pot here watered with um, tap water to start off with um, obviously as soon as they start to grow so that actual seedlings like that you can just water them with normal watering um, sort of rain water that's my recommendation anyway I know we've had some comments to say other people prefer to do it the other way but I always think um, you know to keep it nice and clean use tap water for the first couple of times and then as soon as they start to grow then you can use rain water which is better for them um, so we've got the, the spinach, as you can see, is growing really well at the back there. Um, sweet peas are almost kind of three, three or four inches high, some of them. Um, so they're growing really well. That's the money maker um, tomato. As you can see, there's a bit of a witness mark there where I've had a bit of a slug going there. So that's why I've put the slug pallets down. Um, the alicante is looking almost the same. Germination rate slightly better, but um, the alicantes are there. Um, the asparagus peas, um, as luck would have it, I've had two come up in two pots um, and then on the others I've got one. Um, I've just got one starting to come through there but it looks like something's something's had a go at that so I think somebody's taking the head off that. Um, I haven't seen any out of this bottom lot here but hopefully some more will come through but as I say I'm only going to put about half a dozen of those in this year anyway. Um, the um, the gourds have not come up yet but I wasn't expecting them quite yet to be honest with you. Um, and there's nothing from the um, from the peppers or the chillies yet either. Um, so I'll keep my eye out on them. Obviously as soon as it starts to come through, take the glass off. Um, but that's what the green nest looks like on the 1st of April. Okay, just a really quick update up here. What I've done is I've spread out, as you can see, plenty of chicken muck which has come straight out of the run um, it's it's mainly straw there's a lot of straw in there but that's obviously going to be water um, retentive for the um, for the potatoes so what I've done is I've spread that all over I've also put quite a lot of grass cuttings um, over underneath you can just see them um, down here now this this part of the ground here is sort of quite quite heavy it's quite clay so what I've done is I've put plenty of straw and that on here trying to break it up ideally the best way to break up clay in the soil is to put lime down but because I've got potatoes here um, I don't really want to put lime on the ground because that'll that'll cause um, scab on the uh, on the potatoes unfortunately so what I've done is I've just spread the chicken muck around um, and as soon as I've got my part through for the rotavator I'll rotivate all this over and um, I'll be able to put the potatoes in um, the apple tree as you can see here is now in blossom so uh, judging by the judging by the amount of um, flowers I've got on it, I should get uh, quite a few um, quite a few um, apples off it this year. So fingers crossed, um, I should have a, a lot more apples than I did last year. Um, the pear tree at the end isn't really doing much at the moment. I've got a couple of couple of buds on the. This is the cherry tree, as you can see. I've got quite a few little buds coming on there. Quite a few cherry blossoms. Um, just starting to come through um, but the apple tree here uh, sorry the pear tree sorry um, isn't really isn't really doing much at the moment it seems to be healthy enough um, you know it's just starting to come through I think I've got some kind of bug on there but um, 
No, no signs of any flowers quite yet. So, I hope this episode was some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Garden.